Well, uh, hello everybody, I'm Teresa. And I'm going to talk about uh, the options of sludge management from their waste production and resource recovery options. So, um, my research is focused in wastewater treatment and um, we treat wastewater to avoid the pollution and degradation of freshwater ecosystems and also to prevent the, um, the loss of the water as a resource. But during the treatment, uh, during the treatment, uh, all the nutrients and the organic matter that is removed from the water is actually removed in the form of sludge. But it's another uh, waste, a semi-solid waste, hazardous because it has a large amount of, of pathogens and uh, putrescible matter, and also needs to be treated. In fact, this is a. Mm. Sorry, it's just I have a cough, so I cannot speak very loudly. Um, so, uh, in fact, it's um, an increasing problematic because uh, really the sludge production, it's, it's massive. Tons and tons of sludge is being produced and the forecasts are nothing but optimistic. This is because, uh, on the one hand, um, the seawater water <laughs> is starting to be extensively um, treated, which is very good because we are achieving a high quality of fresh waters. But uh, as a matter of fact, the better you treat the water, the higher the quality of, of the effluent water, the more sludge you produce, and also the more energy you need to, to clean it. So what are the options? Uh, well, uh, the sludge can be reused in agriculture because it has a lot of nutrients, but it all, um, this, this use needs to be regulated because it also has pathogens and putrescible matter, so uh, it has some limitations and also to prevent pollution, especially from heavy metals. Uh, so here we have an, uh, a problem that it's on the one hand, we are asking for cleaner and cleaner water but on the other hand, um, we are also becoming more uh, restrictive with regards to potential reuse of the sludge. So uh, mm, this, uh, the new uh, more restrictive regulation may challenge the potential use of the sludge, which in the end is going to be incinerated, which is uh, not a very sustainable option. So. Uh, in general, it's treated by anaerobic digestion, that it's um, a process by, by which the microorganisms break down the organic matter into its basic components. In the absence of oxygen, uh, producing biogas, that is a mixture of carbon dioxide and methane that can be reused to produce energy in, in electricity and for heat. And um, it's a temperature dependent <laughs> process. So the higher the temperature, the better the performances, and it's generally done in mesophilia between 25 and 37 degrees, which, need, which means that you need to heat up the, the sludge to do it. So I'm especially, I, I want to look at how to increase the sustainability of large gauge in sea wastewater treatment because it's not a very sustainable industry uh, right now especially with regards to sludge management and the operation of, of anaerobic digestion. Um, looking at it from its resource recovery potential in terms of biogas produ production, the energy balance of the treatment plant and uh, how to minimize the production of waste sludge and to enhance its potential reuse. I'm gonna do this with the aid of uh, an anaerobic digestion pilot plant. Uh, which is an intermediate scale between lab and industry and taking the sludge direct, directly from where the wastewater treatment plant would do. Uh, so I'm gonna like, compare the thermophilic and mesophilic region because they are normally done in mesophilic, but in thermophilic you can achieve a higher um, degree of, of breakdown of organic matter, which is translated into less waste sludge production and more biogas in less time. And also, you um, you eliminate more pathogens, which is uh, very important 
issue if you want to apply it to agriculture, but it's a more energy demanding process. So um, it is not clear whether the gas you produce will make up for uh, uh, higher energy inputs. And also it's less stable, which means it's more difficult to control. And uh, there is another issue and it's that um, you can digest almost every organic uh, waste, but it's not largely implemented in other industries. So uh, there are very ambitious targets uh, for 2020 uh, on energy and landfill. Uh, for instance, 20% uh, uh, use of renew renewable energies and 50% of, of recycling of municipal waste. And the EU is actually encouraging the waste, the, um, the water industry to help out in the elimination of other organic waste because they have the digesters. But the problem is that the digesters are designed in accordance to an expected inflow. And if you put more waste, uh, the capacity may be surpassed and then the system will collapse. And also there are some other limitations like different regulatory frameworks that uh, it's not very clear what you're gonna be able to do with the sludge. And also you have to look at the the chemical composition on the nature of, of the um, substrate. So um, I believe that sludge treatment is as important as water treatment and we need to be really careful uh, on how to do this and what we want to aim at. Uh, it's a temperature dependent uh, process and uh, the nature of, of the implant is also very important. And fertilization is a good alternative to meet the, the targets on energy and on landfilling. But uh, either you build new digesters, either you increase the capacity of, of the current ones, because if not, it's, it's not actually possible to, to make it happen. And uh, there's a lot to research on, uh, on how to make it happen, uh, comparing the different ways in which to operate an early digestion and co-digestion uh, and to look at the reuse potential of and uh, of the biogas that you produce the the energy balance of of, of the treatment plant and uh, whether the sludge is going to be able to comply with microbiological standards with your being able to apply it to agriculture or not, its quality as a fertilizer as well, and uh, cost and benefits all, all, all year round, and also um, nutrient recovery. So that's it. Yeah, thank you very much indeed for this uh, straightforward presentation. That's quite interesting also to see the kind of range of your <laughs> assessment methodology that you try to, uh, uh, that you try to apply. Uh, other questions, uh, comments, encouragements from the floor? And that's all right. Could you use the microphone, sorry? Oh, sorry. Right next um, to you. Hi, uh, yes. Um, Teresa, could you expand a little bit more on the pilot plan that you are that you are working on? Is that uh, do you have any input on that, or how much control do you have on that, and who is funding this? Uh, so, mm, what? Sorry. The pilot plan that you showed that you yeah. said it was it was something between the lab scale and the and the real case. Yeah. Um, uh, do you how much control do you have of that, of the input of what goes in and out uh, of what happens? Uh, this is a can you see? Yeah, this is a digester that it's uh, 5.5 cubic meters. And uh, we put the sludge from, from a mixed settling tank, so it's primary and secondary sludge. And it's uh, supposed to work in a continuous mode. And so uh, here it has a cover to prevent uh, temperature loss. And it is partly monitored from automatism, like the pH, the temperature, the, the the gas art flow, the methane and, and oxygen concentration. And I also look at solids and nutrients in, in the lab. 
and uh, yeah, I also use high gravity settler to um, concentrate a bit more in the slide, just put it there. Could I also ask a question? Um, I've heard of a process called mono incineration. Mm -hmm. Did you come across this process? What I heard about it is that it is able, uh, as per demonstration project, to recover some of the nutrients like phosphorus to an astonishing degree, like 90% recovery rate. On the other hand, it's an incineration process which might destroy some of the other valuable materials in it. And I wonder if this whether you also look around yeah. and do some technology screening and compare mm. your technologies with potential alternatives. Well, actually, I haven't done much on on incineration. Um, but what I do know about incineration that it's that you need it's much more energy demanding than than yeah. than the um, digestion. And also, I mean, here the digestive slide you can actually use it as as organic um, fertilizer, and that way you recycle the waste, whereas the ash, you cannot do anything with it. For instance, you can also recover the phosphorus from the digestion, but um, the reduction of volume is very low. Yeah. So y there's still a massive amount of waste you have to do something with it. Yeah. Great. There's one more question up there, two more actually. Can I just ask the question again that this person asked you? Whereabout is this plant, and what control do you have over the variability in what is being done in it as a, as a pilot? Do you, do you have any input on what, what you can vary? Uh, yeah, I, um, well, I vary the, the, the inflow. But uh, actually, I've calculated the um, the up to <laughs> the optimum uh, slide reten retention time because it has to work in a continuous mode. That is how it works in the industry, and I control well. I actually control most everything via temperature. Uh, if the pH drops, I can add uh, alkalinity, although it hasn't been necessary. Uh, and um, I also check out the outcome of all the systems. So I'm actually managing the pilot plant. And it's in Spain. It's in a city called Cáceres in Spain. What's it called? Cáceres. Nope. You can probably check and uh, come back to her about the details. Great, thank you. Uh, there was one more question there. Yvonne um, Cha, um, a Margadet. Um, has membrane bioreactor has, um, been implemented in, in as part of this SRM process to to um, clean the water as well as extracting the light? No. Uh, no, well, this, I mean, um, no, I mean, normally the, the treatment plants have activated sludge, but not with membranes. And, uh, and this is what comes after. Uh, I missed. So I'm sorry about the graphs, they're not very good. But uh, so this is a basic scheme of a wastewater treatment plant. And um, so the membrane bioreactor would be the secondary reactor. And I'm working like a bit uh, downstream in the process in the, in the thickening. So I'm not actually cleaning the water. I'm working with what is left after cleaning it.
just a little suggestion from 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 my side because obviously I'm kind of used to visualizing and for me it's very s difficult to to see the how this relates to the city itself right and I think it would be interesting to to have a series of, of diagram that you could add in 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 in, in, in you know to, to try to visualize how this particular plant or others that you may propose could actually relate to the city itself to its infrastructure to its landscapes etc you know just having a kind of maybe you know Google map view and kind of mapping out the relationship between things because otherwise it's kind of for me it's always very hard to to capture how this in fact relates to 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 the to the city itself you know to, to the geography of it yeah. <laughs> it comes uh, in a way across but you might be uh, he might be right but in terms of this well, I mean everything you uh, pull down the toilet in Tampino is wire treatment plant so it's a <laughs> massive amount of things you need to clean up absolutely I was struck by the comparative value of the feedstocks for the biogas reactors, with, with um, animal uh, waste being um, very, very poor quality, maybe as a feedstock to produce energy, and, and uh, wheat being a very high value feedstock. Yeah. Uh, are there any green tariffs even now? Green? To, are there tariffs, government tariffs now, to encourage the use of sewage as a feedstock compared to using? Um, freshly harvested maize or, 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 or um, food, food, food resources, which I feel would be yeah, unethical um, to use if you could use sewage. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, they are, they're encouraging to for its reuse and also for their elimination because, uh, because of the pathogenic load they have. And also the feedstocks, um, there's, I mean, you can get a lot of, biogas from from crops that I mean because mm. the more carbon it has like uh, lipids and carbohydrates they produce a lot but also it seems a bit unfair to use cropland for producing biogas when there's a lot of people being hungry so this is another way to use something that is wasted and not otherwise is landfilled 